Hello, amazing humans. Watch Shitways Wednesday, Y62 edition with Rolly from Takeaway. Takeaway. Yeah. So Rolly operates a, a local vehicle and caravan weighing business. Yeah. And we want to cut through the bullshit and get some really amazing data about what vehicles weigh, the effect on the effect on tow bar weight, standard vehicles, accessories. That's not me. He's an expert. So we've decided we're going to collaborate and work together to get you amazing data so you can figure out what's going on for you. So we're going to start with, uh, to get some clean data to start with, we'll start with what the patrol weighs by itself without anything on it. That'll give us an accurate reading as to how the car comes out of the factory, what the load is on the front and the rear axles. Then we'll find out what happens to those axles and the total mass of the car once you put people on board. Uh, and then we're going to put the tow ball on the back of it with this lovely big trailer we've got here on site and we're going to see how the tow ball mass of the trailer affects the overall mass of the car and also the rear axle of the car. Thank you, mate. You can present the whole skit. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, this, was, this had the potential of being really, really, really complicated, so I'm doing a voiceover so we can cut through to the really critical points, which is going to help keep you engaged and on the point, so let's just make it easy. So the process is that we're going to weigh three differently configured Y62 patrols and we're going to weigh them with, with humans, without humans, the vehicles as they are, but we're also going to put tow ball mass onto the vehicle. So what we're doing here is we are weighing the tow ball weight so we can get a consistent control measure across all of the vehicles that we're going to weigh and it's going to play a huge impact on the GVM and rear axle load. And as you can see here, the tow ball weight of this Chameleon dual axle trailer is 219 kilograms. And I'll talk about the, the configurations of the patrols in a second, but it's important that we, we behave the same way every time. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna weigh the vehicle empty to start with, then with two humans in them, and then we're gonna weigh the vehicles with two humans and the trailer weight. But I just want to let you know that we actually, for this example, we've got two humans that are above average weight. Because apparently Nissan reckons that a human weighs 70 kilos and two of them should be 140, but we don't. We've actually got 200 kilos of humans in your vehicle. So while you, when, you're, when you're doing your weight maths about your vehicle, it's really, really important to include your human load uh, very deliberately in your calculations because it's going to make a difference. Okay, the vehicles that we're weighing today, three Nissan patrols. First one is a totally standard Y62 patrol. It's actually a 2IL and it is full of fuel and has a tow bar. The second vehicle we're weighing today is Benny's 2IL patrol and this is what we call our weekend warrior. So this vehicle has the 4.2 tonne GVM upgrade Alloy wheels, 295 tyres, Rasslar front bar recovery points and a set of driving lights and on the rear it has a standard Nissan tow bar only. Vehicle number three is what we call an adventure tour. We actually built this for a client. So what this vehicle has is the 4.2 tonne GVM upgrade. It has Rasslar front and rear bars but it also has a winch recovery points and UHF antenna on the front. It has a snorkel, it has 295 7018 Maxxis uh, all-terrains, it has FXH wheels, and in the back of the vehicle it has storage, which means that it's a fridge drawer combo, it has an Evercool 40 litre fridge and a Kangoey 110 amp hour lithium battery. Okay, stick with me because there was a chance that I was going to totally geek out here. We're going to do this in three ways. We're going to look at the standard vehicle capacity, I'm going to jump over a spreadsheet to talk about leverage load. That is leverage load from the front, bull bar accessories, human load, and then rear accessories. And then we're going to come back to a conclusion so you can understand really, really clearly how this is going to affect you when you're talking about building a vehicle. So on our spreadsheet here, we've got three vehicles, stock vehicle, weekend warrior, and adventure tourer. Then we've got empty with two passengers and then two passengers and the trailer. And remember, our human load was just over 200 kilos, so 205 to be exact. I'm gonna use round numbers because 
I want you to retain the information, right? So 200 kilos worth of humans, 220 kilos worth of ball load. Now the stock vehicle in this current configuration is fine. When you then start to, to add a bull bar and tow bar and wheels and tires on the weekend warrior, you can actually see that the front axle load here, we're exceeded. We exceed this front axle load by 40 kilograms. So that's with, with Ben, his massive orange beard, Pancho, the bar work, tires and tow bar, we're, we're over. So what that actually does, that also pushes our GVM over by 15 kilograms. That's not a lot of accessories and we don't have humans in the back and there's no roof rack and drawers, long range fuel tanks and all that. There wasn't even a winch in the bar, okay? So then this is, a st if, if the vehicle was standard, we'll go on to the conclusion, which has the GVM and stuff, and we'll show you how it makes a huge difference. So this is the Adventure Tourer. As you can see here, we've got over front axle load, over rear axle load, and over GVM. Now, how many vehicles have you seen driving around that have all of this equipment on? You know, and in my brain, I'm asking the question, I wonder what, I wonder what's going on here. Is this vehicle legal? And we, so I see them everywhere. And I guarantee you that probably nine out of 10 vehicles on the road are not actually legal for this exact reason. So just reflecting on the data that we see here, um, you can't build a weekend warrior or adventure touring type vehicle um, and stay legal. Ben's adventure tour here had no winch. It had two people in it and we're already over front axle load. The Adventure Tourer had bar, winch, humans, whatever. We're over front axle load, we're over rear axle load, and we're over GVM. Listen guys, you, you cannot build a, a Y62 Patrol and stay legal. It's, we've got the data. We, we've been building these for a very long time, and this is proof that you can't, you can't just do what you want to this vehicle and stay legal. I care about you guys. Let's jump into leverage load and show you how that dynamic affects the numbers. We have got so much data and we want to go micro, but I just want to let you know, I learned so much out of this and it's kind of scary what we actually found out. So we want to talk about lo uh, lo leverage ratio, load ratio, and how fitting accessories to your vehicle is going to impact your vehicle from a handling perspective. We won't go into that, but it's true. We're gonna talk about how adding accessories affects your axle load, front axle load, rear axle load, and your GVM. So we've got this chart here. I didn't do it. Pancho did it. He's way cleverer than me. So what we're gonna dive into right now is front axle ratio. So the low leverage load uh, of the effect of putting these accessories on the front of your vehicle. So what we've actually figured out is that for every kilogram that you add to the front of your vehicle, whether it's bull bar, bull bar winch lights, whatever, we've actually found out that that amplifies that leverage to 166%. So if you add 100 kilograms worth of bull bar winch lights, on the front of the vehicle, the effect is going to be 166 kilograms of axle load. So 166 kilos of axle load on a Y62 Patrol. Now, if that's a full-size bull bar, winch, lights, battery, whatever that is, you've only got 197 kilograms to play with total on the front axle. So then you start including some human weight, which we'll get into in a sec, and you just blow through your axle load. You can't just add all this stuff to the front of your car and expect it to be legal. I'm sorry, this is gonna upset some people. And it's kind of, my accountant hates me for being so honest like this, because what it means is there's a chance that I'm not gonna sell you stuff. And, I, and I'm totally okay with that. I just wanna guide you in the right direction. Let's do it properly, I care about you. Now we understand what the, the accessory load does to your, to your axle load, I wanna jump into the effect of having humans in the vehicle. So remember we talked about having 200 kilos of human load. This is what it does to your axle load. So this is the, the standard vehicle. This is the Weekend Warrior and this is the Adventure Tourer. So really interesting for us, 
was that the human load of, we've got 205 here, or these numbers are based on 205, 58% of, of the human load in the front row gets attributed to the front axle. So I'm, you know, I'm two and a bit humans, actually, in mass. 58% of my mass is going on the front axle. So when you add your leverage load from your accessories to the front axle, you have to include your human load into the front axle. As we add more weight to the, to the rear of the vehicle, that number decreases. So on the other extremity, we've got the Adventure Tourer, which had, it had drawers, it had a rear bar, it had a battery, a fridge, that is having a, um, a cantilever effect. That's actually pulling load off the front axle. And, and this is how it works. We're gonna, we'll leave this on the screen. We'll put, it, we'll put a screenshot there. 58 down to 48%. This is one of the numbers that kind of melted my brain. I kind of figured out that it was, that was a thing, but now we've actually got some data on it and we can understand that. So you might not even care about putting a bar on the front of your vehicle. You may not need it, but the rear axle is where a lot of people are going to come unstuck. And we've actually figured out the leverage ratio of tow ball mass to rear axle load. And this is how it works. So this is the standard vehicle, this is the weekend warrior, and this is the adventure tourer. So as you can see, the, it increases rear axle load reciprocally to how much accessories you've got on the back of the vehicle. So you can see here, the leverage load of the tow ball on a standard vehicle is 120, let's call it 125%. On the Weekend Warrior, it's 127%, and then on the Adventure Tourer, it's 128%. So the moral of the story is, even if you just rounded it, and you want it to be safe, and you want it to say 1.3 to one, right? Here's the numbers, you can see that. But if you're just doing brain maths, 1.130%. So if you've got 100 kilos of tow ball mass, it's gonna equal 130. If you've got 200 kilos of tow ball mass, it's gonna be 260 kilos of axle load. And if you've got 300 kilos on the tow ball, it's gonna equal 390 kilos of axle load. So be smart, be very deliberate about the way you're doing your weight maths, because I want to see you traveling this amazing country, legit. I want to make sure that the vehicle's built right for you. I missed something in the detail, and it's here. We have a 100 kilogram difference in the tow ball weight delta between these three vehicles, and that is specifically related to the towing height of the van. So in the Adventure Tourer, because the tow ball was significantly up, what it's actually doing, it's starting to pull some load it's trying to lift the front suspension on this dual axle trailer. So what that's done is put more load onto the back here. Similarly, if it's too low, what it's gonna do is it's gonna unload the rear suspension, right? And it's gonna wanna pull it up. And that's when you're gonna get some weird handling characteristics in your trailer. If you need to invest in the right tongue or drop tongue or raised tongue or springs and airbags, just invest in it and do it properly. I hope this helps. So now we're going to jump back to our conclusion. We've got all the weights and the effect and capacities when you actually deliberately deploy a GVM upgrade in your vehicle. Okay, to, to consolidate everything, to try and make this easy to understand, what we're going to do, we're just going to break down all three vehicles, starting with the stock vehicle. And if you have a GVM of 3,500 3, kilograms, the total capacity that you've got left in that vehicle is 179 kilograms. Whether that's luggage, humans, accessories, whatever that is, you, you, you don't have much left. Weekend Warrior and Adventure Tourer have both got upgraded front axle and upgraded rear axle capacities. And as you can see here, 1750 on the front and 2550 on the rear. So we can see here now that the front axle load is green because it means we've got capacity left. And as you can see here, we've got 60 kilos of capacity remaining on the front axle 
And on the rear axle, which is sitting at right around 1950 kilos, we've actually got 600 kilos of capacity left to play with. And that's accessories and ball load and whatever else we need. So when we jump across to the Adventure Tourer, the dynamics change because of all the rear load that you can see here. So that's actually got 165, um, 165 more kilograms of accessories in the vehicle. It's unloaded the front. It's actually given us more capacity on the front axle. What's that? 30, 39 kilos of load removed from the front because we've added rear load. And as you can see here, the front axle load has increased, had given us more capacity. That's up to 100 kilograms. And on the rear axle, it's reduced because of the additional accessories we've got. We've only got 435 kilos of capacity left. So you've got to be super mindful if you've got a, a, a storage configuration, rear bar, tire carriers, whatever in the back of the vehicle. It's, it, your tow ball is going to creep up. You might be getting into danger zone. So we've got to be super deliberate about the way we build the vehicle. And it's really, really important that if you want to run a full frontal bar and winch and lights and everything, we actually do need to increase the load we put on the back of the vehicle to take some load off the front. This is a really delicate balance. And we just wanted to show you that you can't just build one of these vehicles how you want it without the maths and without guidance and talking to someone who really, really understands dynamically how to build these vehicles, dynamically and legally. So in summary, if you want to build a very deliberate, well thought out vehicle, there's a couple of things that you've really, really got to do. One of those things is you actually do need to add weight to the rear axle to balance the front. And if you look here, look at this almost perfect weight distribution from front to rear, that is going to result in very, very balanced handling and performance. That vehicle is going to feel so stable on the road at high speed, low speed, towing. It, that's great. I've never seen this. I, I freaked out a bit when I saw it right? because it's, it's perfect. So in conclusion, you can't build one of these vehicles without supporting modifications. You need to increase your axle capacities, your GVM, but more than that, you need to align with somebody who knows what's going on, who can guide you in the right direction, who's prepared to sit in front of a spreadsheet or a calculator and invest the time with you to, to get the end result right. And whether that's me or someone else, that's up to you, right? Just learn somehow, get, take something away from the time and effort that we've invested in this I, care, I really care about you. I want to see you get the right outcome. Comment below. T if, tell me I'm full of shit if you think. So we want to, we want to make this spreadsheet available to everyone, but I just, I'm terrified that if we just put it in our drive and give, give everyone access to it, that someone, some malicious individual is going to find their way into our staff and cause us trouble. So I think... Um, messages, text messages, the number's available, and it's on the screen, text messages, and we'll find a way to get it to you. I don't know the mechanics of that, I'm just making this up as I go along, but I care about you, I want to make sure that you get some value out of it, so just reach out, I, I want to get you the data.